Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. I am your host, Mark Ellis, joined, as always, by the incredible, the wonderful, uh, the the tea leaf dropping. I do spill the tea, and then you drop tea leaves. She's giving yeah. me a lot of hints about stuff I haven't seen yet. Yeah. And I'm Jacqueline Coley knows how she's torturing me, particularly this time of year, with the certain films that come out around yeah. this season. Yeah, and normally they're like awards ones, but yeah, I, I dropped a little knowledge on this one. Around horror, which I was just going to say mm -hmm. to Mark, I've had a lot more horror movies. I know I'm looking very Texas Chainsaw Massacre today, but... You look, you look like you're about to go bobbing for apples. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's it's uh, it's been more... There was a time that I avoid horror movies. There I know. There was a time, and this, the movie that we have today was this time. I was very much <laughs> realizing. I was like, oh, why was this, like, so not a part... I was like, oh, you didn't do this back then. And movies like this is the reason why. Uh, yeah. Well, back in 2009 when this film came out, our guest was but a zygote, I believe. Uh, <laughs> he <laughs> is just... This guy not only can tell you the chronology of Saw and the franchise in its entirety while he's drunk. There's a YouTube video proving that. He also has a great horror maze that he's putting on in New York City uh, here in a couple weeks. And this weekend, you can find him on the Wanger Show Karaoke. I believe it's their fourth edition. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know him as the host of Pretty Much It. He is our good buddy. First time in studio yes. for Eric Striffler. Yeah, yeah. So excited to be here. I've been on a couple times, or at least once for sure, uh, uh, on Zoom. So it's very nice to actually be here. Well, yeah. Yes, you, thanks for having me. You were the kid, the adorable young pup who just loves the mummy with Brendan yes, Fraser. That's right. That's what it was. That's <laughs> oh what it was. You wore your yeah, mummy maybe. shirt, I believe. Yep, that's right. Do you know how I didn't many, have anything for Saw, Do you know how many bisexual girls you took that one off the chart for? Like, seriously, mm -hmm. you should you should very much honor the fact that there's an entire cohort of theys that are mad that you got to do that episode. Like seriously. There's a lot of people that wanted it. to talk the mummy yeah. and I'll take it. you were the, the you the were the nerd. crown jewel. You were yeah. the crown. Like you should <laughs> own it and lord it over them. I'll take it. <laughs> now, I will. I'm not going to say there was quite as much demand <laughs> for guests clamoring to talk about You're kidding. Saw no. 6. You're ki Saw 6 specifically. Saw right? 6 yeah. specifically. And I'd like to just recount a little bit of the text message chain that went on between Eric and our producer Brian Perez. And, and wait, wait. I'm sorry. Before Mark does his Announcer bit. Let me give you all a little background. We have the actual like screenshot yeah, of the text yeah. message. This is very You're watching the simulcast. Here it is. This is very meme worthy. Like we could put this on the YouTube. I hope y'all do. All right, and Mark, this is take how, it away. If you know Eric, which, which we all do and love, uh, this is how you take advantage of him because <laughs> his, his mind works faster than the normal human brain was meant to do. And so you can just tee him up with a little question and then he'll just send you pages and pages oh, yeah. of, of real, or just thoughts, mm -hmm. stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So Brian, an innocent text producer. Out of nowhere, life. by the way. This yeah. kid, he just texted me this out of nowhere. Do you want me to give you your dings? Ding. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Ding. Hey, buddy, question. What's the most underrated movie in the Saw franchise? Ding. Ooh, great question. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> My first thought is six, but that's a fan favorite, so I don't know if it's technically underrated. Ding. Three is also a fan favorite, maybe generally underrated in the sense that most folks are probably like they should have stopped at one. Ding. No, they should have stopped at three. Ding. And TBH Spiral was better IMO than most give it credit for, even though Jigsaw isn't in it. LMAO. Ding. <laughs> I'm going to go with six. <laughs> Final answer. And here we are. And that is how we arrived at six. Oh, my God. By the way, the reason why I was late on the digs, it's not that I don't have rhythm. I was too busy laughing and yeah. trying not to ruin the take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That was really good. We, it's like you and I practiced it's it. It's almost but like we have some on-air chemistry, man. As you know, Jacqueline and I never <laughs> practice anything. It's all live for you folks. Off the dome. Saw 6 is a movie that is 39% rotten, which I saw and I'm like, okay, Eric's going to come in here and fervently defend the movie. Come to realize it's actually the second highest rated Saw right, film right. by Tomato Meter. Yeah. Only the original Saw yeah. tops it, and that's still rotten at 50%. So... Before we get into Saw 6 and whether Rotten Tomatoes is wrong about that, I mean, look, you got 39% Rotten, 47% audience score. These are good scores by Saw franchise sure. yeah. you know, numbers. By so, sixth entry in any franchise, it's yeah. like, okay, sure. What yeah. is it about Saw that, like, on, uh, on the whole, is just all these films, and now we got the new one coming out. Why do critics not like these movies, Eric? You know, I don't know. I, I think, first of all, horror, I feel like it's tough. It's very subjective. What scares you, what doesn't, mm -hmm. right? I, 
are these even horror movies technically? I guess, like, it, it depends, again, what you find scary. If you find ghosts scary and that's it, then these are not horror movies to you, right? Um, but also, yeah, they're gross. I feel like they were kind of like breaking the rules and making the new rules in a way, because it kind of launched a new category of movie unintentionally, you know, like with Hostel and stuff like that, things just getting more and more gritty. The quote, torture porn kind of thing. Yeah, mm. I don't want to say it, but you can say it. I, I, I feel <laughs> like these movies toe the line very well. The first Saw is not that at all. It's a psychological thriller. Yeah. Right. It's, a, it's a Sundance film. It was like a movie, movie, you know what I mean? I, and Yeah, go ahead. But so point is like they started to devolve a little bit. And this one, I will say, elevated it as they were going... You know, kind of going down, and I'm a huge fan, so I, you know everything I say with love. I love all the movies, uh, but it was kind of going downhill, and this one brought it back up a bit, which I saw some of the reviews mentioned too. Yeah, you know? and I, I get surprised by these kind of movies, Jacqueline, because I don't seek movies that are this graphic as far as like the violence and the blood and gut, like literal guts go. <laughs> but every time I stumble across a saw film, and I've seen a few, not all of them, but a few, I'm like, these are really cool. These are fun. They they are definitely disgusting. They're bloody gross, but there's a lot to get into with yeah. the Saw movies, and I felt the same way about Six. So I'll kick us off here and say, yes, I think Rotten Tomatoes is wrong. I mm -hmm. think this movie should be higher. Uh, I do think this movie is better than it seems. This movie brought me back such memories. I just wanted to tag team on what you were saying about why critics didn't like it. The thing about the Saw franchise, and no, I did not watch all of these, but I did watch a YouTube video that gave me the beats of each one. <laughs> a lot of yours. Was it by uh, Eric? Yeah, it might it was have been like, me. A lot of yours. Uh, <laughs> Yours is part of the plethora, but I guess what I would notice is what was going on in movies at the time. And this movie came out, and then it kind of got wrapped up in the Final Destination sort of like big horror gore gag thing. Yeah. Because what the Saw franchise has done is reflected the horror sentiments of other franchises at the time. And this was the one that was happening at the same time as Paranormal Activity. And yeah. because this one wasn't received as well, sort of in that... I would say, like, every time Saw did something well, somebody would come after it that would make that look a little bit more ridiculous. Like, the psychological thriller, after you do Final Destination, it looks like it's low stakes. Right. And now they got to up the stakes. And so now they do one that kind of returns to form, but it's like, well, now we have these people that are doing these more psychological gags yeah. in that one. And it's like they always felt behind the eight ball and what the audience's we're wanting at the time. And, it feels like superhero yeah. movies now. Yeah. Like, oh, you're flying around. We got that. Yeah. We're done with that. It becomes sort of next? an arms race where it's yeah. like, we, we just have to be like either bolder or scary or whatever yeah. else. It, it's funny you bring that up, Jacqueline, because Saw 6 actually opened against Paranormal Activity, yeah. like literally the same weekend. And that movie was such a juggernaut. And it did, because Saw 6 came out, I think it was, the budget was $11 million. It ended up making $68 million worldwide, which oh, is a they all huge return money, on profit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't the return on profit that Paranormal Activity was no. because that was made for like eight bucks and made like three hundred million dollars. <laughs> they returned all the cameras. Right, and everything. Yeah. literally buy a camcorder, and yeah. that's how, that's the budget for the first PA movie. So, Eric, I feel like you're going to be in agreement with Jacqueline and I. The Rotten Tomatoes is wrong about Saw Six because that thirty nine percent it just ain't high enough for me. No, I mean it's it's wrong, especially if you just factor in like that Saw is at what fifty percent, I think something yeah. like the that. First the original is, yeah. Saw. Mm -hmm. 50%? Are mm -hmm. you kidding me? Come on. It's an actual really good movie. Uh, and launched, you know, the, look at the franchise it launched. It's unbelievable. That counts for something. Absolutely. Obviously, there's something there, right? Well, if, if you didn't love the movie, like, it, the formula's there. It, okay, look, if you look at Saw and you just say, okay, let's take that 50% number, because most other first entries in these classic horror franchises are fresh. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm yeah. Street is in the 90s. Halloween, Halloween is in the 90s. Yep. So if yeah. we take that 50 and we make it now, now all of a sudden you're saying the sixth film in this franchise only fell 11% percent yeah. so this should be around the so high it, 70s it should bring up all of them is yes. my point yes yes also when did rotten tomatoes really like start because i i wonder also oh well we just had our uh 25th, 25th birthday yeah because i was gonna say so it was kind of in the, in the early days halloween everyone has to go back to review it yeah yeah, right. And I you mean, have those nostalgia goggles maybe as well. I mean, I love Halloween. I mean, they saw people they're, were they're doing more, it at the moment. There's still contemporary reviews that we get. I'm like Tim Ryan, who we're going to talk to in just a moment, would be sad if I didn't like, he would be like, Jacqueline, you didn't correct him. We yeah. do Oh, no, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But um, it's usually- This is just a guess. I don't actually know. <laughs> usually it's about now, depending on how big the movie is, about 50%. But most of our old movies, people aren't reviewing them. Like, you know, when you sure. get something big, like obviously Citizen Kane and some of these ones where you have hundreds of reviews, it's one thing. But most older movies, movies like you'd be surprised how few reviews are out there that are contemporary and how few right. people go back and review it again. That's kind of what I'm thinking though is that like this had more people maybe 
having that in mind. You know what I mean? Oh, As, I see. You wouldn't, if you don't like Halloween, maybe you wouldn't even go back and review mm. it. See what I'm saying? Whereas oh, with this, it's like, oh, it's a new movie. I'm going to review it. That's why Revenge thinking. is still 0%. And it's because I haven't <laughs> gotten zero? around to review. I believe it's a dead zero. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, haven't, I haven't reviewed it yet. Because I, it, it's getting a number. It's getting a real integer. Once Mark Ellis is done with it, because that fourth <laughs> entry in the Jaws for I keep pushing to have that movie on the pod. It's probably never going to happen, but wow. I would love to talk about Mario Van Peebles in it, Michael Caine. Oh, like, yeah. Gary Michael Caine doesn't he have that famous quote about it? Haven't seen the movie, but the house it bought is beautiful or yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love yeah. Me some Michael Apparently, it's Caine. dreadful, something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, we are going to turn it over to our buddy Tim Ryan in just a sec here. I do want to give some shout outs to the website, our great editorials that we have at rottentomatoes.com. You can check out all the Saw movies ranked by Tomato Meter. So, again, the OG is number one. Saw the last chapter is last at number nine at, fittingly, 9%. So we'll see where Saw 10 fits in that lineage. And then we also have how to watch the Saw franchise chronologically. I believe our team did this Stone Cold Sober, unlike the way Eric did it in his vid, but uh, sober, drunk, however you want to figure out how to watch the Saw movies in order because it is a little different than just one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Let's go to Tim Ryan now because Tim is our expert review curation manager here at Rotten Tomatoes, and he's going to tell us what the critics were saying at the time, way back when, on the dawn of Paranormal Activity and this new Saw film, how the critics were feeling about it. Two minutes with Tim. We covered the original Saw in a previous episode, but today we're doing Saw 6. So what did the critics have to say about that one? In a Rotten review, Rob Nelson of Variety called the film so frighteningly familiar it could well be called Saw It already. However, in a fresh review, Wesley Morris of the Boston Globe wrote, who knew that the franchise's creators would eventually find a plot twist that made sense? The Rotten Tomatoes critics' consensus reads, it won't earn the franchise many new fans, but Saw 6 is a surprising step up for what has become an intricately grisly annual tradition. So that's the Saw franchise. Do you like the way brutality feels, Mark? Back to you. <laughs> I'm not saying it was intimate. T- Tim's got a future in, in Jigsaw if he wants it. Yeah. I mean, that, that was pretty good and uh, menacing there, Tim. Thank you for that. Uh, we usually do a synopsis, and I think that today, Jacqueline, it's going to be fun to have our guests have to do the synopsis. <laughs> to say, dude. How much time do I have? So w- let's go ahead and <laughs> let's go and transition to movie talk, and then we'll do the synopsis by performed by Eric Strifler. I actually prepared for this synopsis. I'm glad he's going to do it. <laughs> But I prepared for this. I was literally getting ready. The only thing I will add is whatever you end up saying, I doubt you're going to add the one thing that I found to be the most important about all of it. And I just want to About this movie? About this movie. I know that you will not add this note, but I'm going to. So There's one there, two, one specific moment comes to mind, but it can't possibly be. No, it's okay. not a moment. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's let's, not a moment. Brian, hit the music. Let's find out. Yeah. I'm like, I prep. Interesting. <laughs> Prepped for this. Interesting. Eric Striffler, okay. the, the role you were born to play. I know. Tell us what Saw Get 6 it. is about. Uh, okay, so I'm going to keep it to just what Saw 6 is about. <laughs> So you because got this guy. <laughs> there is, well, because there is uh, Detective Hoffman, Jill Tuck, all of them are like in the background doing the soap opera, which I think is a, a big reason why people love these movies. Every year you got a new episode of the mm-hmm. soap opera. And and I, I think soap opera has a negative connotation, but in this way, it, I mean it in a good way. Like it was, it was fun to keep up with what was going on. So let's keep it to just this movie we have. I, I think it's William uh, is the, um, is the main character. And we're at this point in the franchise, they're basically just repeating Saw 3, where it's like, one person going through and seeing other people in their traps and stuff, which I think like the only time it changed up again was maybe spiral or something. Um, but so he's going through, he is, uh, he works for an insurance company. He is in his overall trap, whatever, because he deny, he denies people insurance. And this got real political. Yeah, <laughs> this movie went, none of the other movies were like <laughs> that. And so I actually appreciate that. Thought that was kind of cool. Um, you know, it had something to say. And I think one of the reviews might've said that as well. And, uh, he has to go through and, uh, you know, again, it gets muddy at this point, but like, are are people in traps if they're not allowed to escape (laughs) technically, you know what I mean? Like you're supposed to be able to escape your trap, but he's going along and finding people that are, that he has to basically decide who lives and dies. One of which is a guy that's in there because he smokes. Right, right. I mean, yeah. Jigsaw's getting a little petty at this point. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first to admit it. But he's got a, he's, he's sort of forced into that conundrum yeah. that all the Saw movies love to do. And then there's a lot of like really interesting and unique, intricate torture devices Correct. along the way. So he's going along the way while the whole soap opera is going on in the background, which is lovely. We can get into it if you dare. 
Uh, the, uh, the, the William storyline is, yeah, he's going through and it's a bunch of employees from his insurance company and Jigsaw's really upset with all of them. You know, just in general, like we can all understand the, the concept of like, you know, an insurance company and, and dealing with that. But specifically, he was denied uh, insurance. Mm-hmm. And you find that out a little bit later on. Um, I will say something that's interesting about this one is I think it's the first one where Jigsaw, you know, how usually it's the puppet on the, or, it's, you know, he just, you just hear the voice or you see the puppet on the TV. You see Jigsaw for this one because this was like his most personal game yet, technically. Because yeah, yeah. it was it was him directly uh, dealing with the guy who denied him insurance. Uh, so I thought that was really interesting, and that's another element that kind of elevated it. And uh, and at the end, are we spoiling this thing? Is that do we assume people have seen it? Yeah, I, I think we can go ahead and spoil it. Uh, yeah. at, at the end, you have one of the better twists, in my opinion. Uh, th- uh, two things really going on: a family twist where you the whole time. I just love about the Saw movies early on in the movie. Uh, the 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 mother and son they see William on the TV and say this is we're here because of your father and you think that that's her husband the mm-hmm. whole time going through it turns out no it's a guy that he uh, their father or the father is a guy that he denied insurance to and those little intricate ways that they say the line saw to you'll find him in a safe place and he's in the safe like there's so many sneaky little things and that's that was one of the best I think in the franchise some of them you get it before they reveal it. Because you're like, all right, why did they say it's so weird like that? This one was perfect, so that's a great twist. And then to get back into the soap opera, what I think is one of the best Saw endings of all time with uh, with the reverse bear trap being escaped by uh, Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you get yeah. all that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got it? And, I did. And Jack was going to add? <laughs> yeah, what? The beginning scene, the actress who won yes. it. Yes, yes. It was on a show that I watched, even though I didn't watch Saw, called Scream Queens on VH1. Oh, right. yeah. It was a contest for her to be a part of it. And the sister won. And there was so much drama about the sister winning. Sorry. On the show. On the so show. So you actually watched it. So did you see the movie at the time? Or no. you just saw it? Re- and you were like, I remember her. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's that was fantastic. literally it. I, I was remember like, them having I watched some sort Scream of Queens. I was, yeah. They did a lot of those like, win the contest, be a part of it. Like this was yep. in the, you know, right. I, who wants to be a VJ? Like and social that, media was starting up yeah, as well. Like yeah. it was I, very that. I remember being aware of that. And that was one, of, it, ironically, I, I think that the promotional campaign that that was worked against saw yeah. because it was like, oh, that's where this franchise is now. Now we're just yes. doing reality shows and yeah. you can win a part. Like, you know, back in my day being a horror and, movie, but like, like all that crap. Yeah, so I, 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 I think that it kind of cheapened good in it. it. And she was actually she's great. She's actually yeah. really good in it, but they assumed she's that awesome. she was be crappy in it because yeah. of everything that happened with it. And I was like, actually, yeah, she's like, great. she's like, tell the folks at Sharknado. I didn't <laughs> marry those two pieces yeah. of knowledge at all until I saw our notes this morning because I'm watching the movie for the very first time last night right. and I experienced it and I'm like, oh no, that's a great opening sequence. I had no idea that it was like somebody won a contest to get in there. I'm like, these yeah. are they, they, these are really well-trained thespians that we're looking at here. And she's got that great scene later when she's like, look at my arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 She's excellent. Um, So we didn't see it in theaters, Eric. Did you see no. this in a theater? Uh, not only did I see it in theaters, I went every year because you know the, the the thing, it was if it's Halloween, it must be Saw. There you go. It was every yep. year, which another another thing that was just so exciting. Since the original, did you see that? So the original, I did not see in theaters. I was a little too young, I guess. I yeah, don't know. I, were, I caught it at home. You were four. I right. caught it at home. <laughs> yeah, I caught it at home. But starting with the sequel, Saw 2, I saw the previous movie and the next one. They did a double feature every year. Oh, So cool, I would go okay. and rewatch the previous. So right. I saw Saw 5 before this one mm-hmm. uh, before, in, in theaters. And I would go with my friends. My dad uh, would bring me because, I, I would, yeah, I was like, by this point, I would have been, 2009 was it? So I'd have been yep. 18. But uh, for the first few years, I couldn't go. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I had to go right. with the parents. So my, my poor dad had to go and watch these so movies. family bonding trip. <laughs> he, he, but it was so lovely of him. He drove me and my friends that Thursday night, whatever at midnight kind of yeah. deal. It was, that was back when it was still at midnight. Actually remember it used to be, you had to go at midnight. Yeah, now it's like now six it's o'clock. Cheat. It's like, I kind of miss midnight. I, I miss like you had to be there at midnight yeah. on Thursday. You, put you want to see a movie before Friday. <laughs> now, nah, which yeah. is all these showtime, 7 it opens PM on Thursday. Come on. Yeah. You soft movie goers. But so yes, I did see them all in theaters. Um, and I, uh, I think they were trying to prevent child delinquency. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> no, well, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah. Now these kids are getting <laughs> like, R-rated movies they earlier. Because they knew kids were the only people that were out that late. And they're yeah. like, this is not good. No. <laughs> kids and their dads, turns out. <laughs> cool band name, Kids and Their Dads. Kids and Their Dads, I uh, like it. Maybe an album. Or a confession. How, how uh, many of the Saw <laughs> movies have you seen? Not touching it. Up to this point. Because I, I just basically got the first one. And then I was lucky enough to see the, uh, the, the most recent entry that's coming out 
in uh, this weekend, I think. My heart is beating so loud in my chest, worrying about I'm you accidentally gonna, saying something. I'm not going to say anything. Okay. I okay. know how... I didn't even text you after I saw it. You I knew saw what the it, Saw movie? Yeah. Yeah, oh. you didn't text me. You know what you you know what I had sent to me? A video of you saying you saw it from Christian. Yeah, right. I'm not I'm not giving away my secrets. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Christian, somebody puts a camera but in my face. But that's fitting that Christian that's on brand. Yeah, yeah. he was trying like, to scare yeah. me. Yeah. He's trying yeah. to scare me. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Keeping on me brand. on edge. No, I think I've seen so I saw the one with Chris Rock, because they sent it to me. Yeah. Spiral. I saw the first one. I've now seen this one. <laughs> There's another one, which is the one with Carrie Ellis when he comes back. Seven. Yeah, I've seen this. Oh, saw cool. The next okay. One. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> insane, but we can't even get into that. It's so I've seen this insane. one and the next one. And the only reason why I watched the next one is because he was back and it was terrible. It's terrible. Listen, we're here to talk about Saw 6. <laughs> we're here to talk about Saw 6. And I can say that the, the, the selling point of this franchise for me is, again, I'm not like a blood and guts guy necessarily, but I do enjoy inventive spins on horror and I think that the torture devices, the traps are always so ingeniously planned. Like mm -hmm. I really get into, mm. hey, how are you doing this? What's the mechanism gonna be like? How and do you get out? How I, would I get out? The psychology yeah. of making those choices, of of having this poor guy. I mean, I guess, you know, he did some bad things. He denied a lot of people coverage. Yeah. And now he has to like figure out which which person he's gonna keep alive, who he's mm. gonna execute. And it's just like, <clears throat> man, you talk about a torturous device. These things go physical and they go mental and emotional. It is tough though, because like I said before, you got the one guy guy that what he smokes yeah you deserve to die <laughs> you know what i mean like I mean, what it's it's a little bit rough and then there also isn't it one where like this was right in the time yeah, when the surgeon the general was like we need warnings on pregnant, cigarettes in so which case i'm like that's shoot that's fine like you know like <laughs> but then there isn't there also a young guy who like his crime in life is like being single for something, he's like, you have yeah. no friends. You're a loser. You deserve to die. Again, oh. this was the this was, the was dawn. He was picking between like the older woman who had less life ahead of her, but like a loving family, and the young guy who has all his life ahead of him, but is like a loser. Yeah, you something. get rid of the young guy. I'm just saying the risk of a of a dude like that left alone. Grandma's not going to hurt anyone. This was 2009, though. <laughs> Very this was true. 2009. And it's that's different even now. More, uh, is no, that no. scarier? <laughs> no, in 2009, yeah, in nine, they th just ditched. This guy, <laughs> this guy had just gotten a keyboard and a YouTube account, yeah. and he was just starting to troll people. That's yeah, so, that's what this guy did. Or could could they have murdered the next uh, Bo Burnham? <laughs> oh. <laughs> because he got a keyboard, maybe a musical keyboard, and was about Bo to start Burnham, his internet career. <laughs> like Bo Burnham mm. didn't come about that at nineteen. No, Bo Burnham so. was like yeah. eight, privileged white in Connecticut, and that just continued. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> We love Bo Burnham on this show. You're welcome. You're welcome anytime. I do. No, he's admitted that, by the way. I'm not saying anything. This proves how much of a Bo Burnham fan. He talks about his very idyllic and privileged upbringing. life. Yeah, and yeah. then he went and did comedy and realized, I'm awful. And then he got better. <laughs> I'm thinking about this movie, franchise as a whole, but also we can talk about this. Because like as you get further down in the lore, obviously the original <laughs> Jigsaw, Tobin Bell, yeah. that, that character has passed away. Yeah. But you He died in two movies technically. It, it, right. Because right. he dies in three and four. If you if you remember four at all, basically he dies at the end of that one again. He seems kind of like <laughs> Kenny from South Park in these occasionally where it's like we're just gonna yes. bring you back for this or for this or for this like this recording <laughs> or this video. Yeah. Yep. But it, it it there is enough there. There is enough of his sort of fingerprints in this movie, I think, to make it feel like he's he's a real genuine part of it right. and not just showing up as like fan service kind right. of thing. Especially with him being on the uh, tapes, him visually instead yeah. of the yeah, puppet. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. adds a lot. Yeah. Instead of yeah. the puppet, fair. It's nice to see him. Uh, can I also say too, um, as a Picket Fences fan, Costas. Oh, good Mandalore. call. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will admit though, like he was like hot in the 90s. Like he was 90s dude hot. And this movie made me question things. He's like, <laughs> Eddie Winslow, Darius McCrary oh, yeah. shows yep, up in yep. this. Now, that's the opposite. I was not checking for Eddie Winslow before. I didn't know he was going to show up. He, he was good in this. He was yeah. good in this. He was good in this. He was in One Night at McCool's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he did some stuff. You know who also leveled up of the black older brother trope? Uh, from the Cosby show, if we can dare speak his mm -hmm. name. Uh, Malcolm <laughs> Jamal Mourner. Yep. Him at 45, Morris Chestnut wishes. There you go. <laughs> Well, that's a stretch. No. Mm -mm. With that beard? No. Okay. Morris Chestnut is like the high bar but for But he's me. been that the whole time. And so it's like now, like, whereas in like with, like Malcolm has gone up. 
This the, the, this listening to this is a saw trap for some. <laughs> listening to Jack and I rate how I'm hot these men like, from like the 80s and 90s that objectify every black man in Hollywood. Considering this show has a hundred episodes and this is the first time we've gone here. You know who else looks really good now? <laughs> Julio White looks really yes. good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just, um, I saw him on a weed commercial and I was like, <laughs> Urkel, yeah, you, yeah. you guess you're what, finally home. Guess yeah. what the weed is called? No, wait. Uh, Stefan Did I smoke Urkel. that? No. Oh, oh wow, that would be better. Oh, be wow, good. that'd be good. Purple Urkel, kids. Oh, okay, Come that's on. good. That's Purple good. Urkel. I liked that I smoked that. I said Stefan Urkel. Did I smoke that? I liked that oh, I Oh, my God. That, yeah. You need to DM that to him Come at on, least. that's pretty good. Did I smoke that? Uh, I bet he has Well, it. there's a lot of uh, smoke and flashing lights and other things when yeah. you do these mazes, you know, yes. that they have. Uh, and I know you're, oh, yeah. you're setting one Horror up. Horror nights, stuff like that. So you can tell us about your your haunted house that you set up in New York. But through the lens of, like, because I know Saw has had, like, those mazes mazes at yeah. theme parks in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. Have you done I those? I they have like, one at Six Flags this year. How actually. intense are they? Because I just did my first maze this year and it was it was freaking Exorcist themed of all things. Oh, there and, you, go. And you know how that movie just gets into oh, my you soul. Did this for I did that RT, and yeah. I did and there was a Stranger Things maze. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and we did The Last of Us and like walking through these mazes and they're like filming me walking through it. Oh, every, I can't wait to see that. Every goddamn twist and turn. I'm shrieking. I am. I'm not. And 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 even the people who aren't supposed to be scary, because they have all these like like yes, like druid Jawa looking folks. Yeah. The security guards too kind of startle you be, because they're not supposed to be seen, right. and they're just pointing. But I, all I see is this tiny little wizard pointing somewhere, yeah. and I'm like, that's even scarier than the other stuff I'm afraid of. Okay. You are not getting the full experience because I've done that video. By the way, I appreciate the Rotten Tomatoes makes mm -hmm. you do that video now because I did that video two years. Gray did that video one year. They oh do it because they see the camera. Like, you're not getting the real Hollywood Horror Nights experience. You're getting the Hollywood Horror Nights with a 4K Deluxe. camera Deluxe. experience. So they're targeting you. Like I that. know. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, yeah when like, you go through, it's a little easier. Like, when you go through normally. So I yeah. just did it in Orlando Horror Nights uh, uh, with, with a couple of friends. And yeah, we're just going through normally. And yeah, you see, like, you know, you see them up ahead sometimes, whatever. But but so the, the important thing to me is just getting to be, like, inside of a movie. Yeah. Like the scares are fun, mm -hmm. but for me, it's like it's being immersed in like a cinematic uh, Stranger Things. I mean, like you get to be in Stranger Things. I don't know how it was in Hollywood, but in Orlando, it was fantastic. Well, no, I mean, because I go in there and my first thought is like, because I know the camera's going to be on me the whole time. It's like, all right, Mark, you, you know how to handle this. Just ham it up a little for the camera. Sure. Make it a good bit. You don't that need went to. Out, did that me went too. out the window. Need to. No. The first turn I took, I'm like, get me the hell out of here. <laughs> yep. Because yep. the worst thing for them is for you to go through that and not look scared. Yeah. Like, yeah, right, that is right. actually like the kiss of death. So just so that doesn't turn out bad, they like go up for it. Well, I they have, got what they wanted. <laughs> I have the opposite. They have these necklaces that people that maybe have sensory issues or just don't like to be touched mm -hmm. can put on, right. which is actually even better because it's like you can be right up on somebody having whatever happens to you happen mm -hmm. to you, but they don't touch you. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love being in the middle of a haunted house where you're not a part of the. You're just hitting your little wife call button, like, <laughs> no! hey, don't. Like they just like it's. You're just, not at the front of the group like, or the, the end of the group. Is yeah. just on you, like it's a little like a uh, light up necklace, and it's like basically like they just don't. All right, touch I'm you. talking to production because that was no. not that option was not offered to me. Well, because then it would not. That's not the video. <laughs> have, have, have you done a saw maze before? Uh, no, so when I did it, it was Purge movies. That was That's the other. Fun. That was yeah. the other reason why I didn't want to do it. it was like the Purge time. Yeah, that they were doing a lot of those. This Blumhouse stuff. But yeah. like with, with Saw, I imagine. Like, are you in a trap? Because the other thing that I don't want to do, like like the mazes are fine. You walk through them, you get the crap scared out of you for a couple minutes. I'm not. I've never done an escape room, so there. I guess there's a chance that I would love it. Like mm. they even offered when I was working in Vegas this past week, they had like this Saw escape room yeah, experience right. you could yeah. do. And unfortunately, it was like at night. Maybe fortunately for me, it was at night, and I had shows, so I couldn't go do it. But it was pretty <laughs> yeah, much what like, a shame. And a Escape room themed by Saw yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. Is yeah. that right? Have you done those things? Is, is I've that never right done one of the Saw escape rooms. It is up my alley. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I, I gotta do like it. I feel like if Jigsaw were to like just like take the three of us prisoner, mm. Jack and I would be like looking to Eric, like, hey, dude, how do we get out of it? Like, well, I would be immediately analyzing all the words he said to find what 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 did he say that was a little weird. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a test for you. Okay. Oh, here we go. You're leaving a theater. Mm -hmm. There's one car in a parked garage. <laughs> And it has the door open and you're walking by. The door is open. What do you do as you're walking by? Uh, get kidnapped by a pig. Do you like, but do you like, are you? <laughs> that's the only I'm thing not, that's going to happen. I'm not looking. <laughs> I'm immediately looking the opposite direction of the open door. Me and you will be fine. Okay. Yes, yeah, I'm getting kidnapped by the you're pig. You're like 
Because if you are curious as to why that door is open, mm-hmm. you're not making it to the end of the last right, bus. Right, you right, know what I mean? Right, like, right. I don't need to be curious about that f-ing door. It's not right. Well, <laughs> right, right. The good news is they don't make you, they don't make you escape usually, like yeah. in, the, in the haunted houses at the at Horror Nights and stuff like that. But you do go through rooms and see characters. So maybe you would see, I think her name is Simone, the Scream Queen's character, yeah. uh, maybe, you know, waving her arm around or something like that. They jump out at you with that. And it's so cool just to get to see that stuff. The puppet, you know, you hear the voice, you hear the music. The, we haven't even mentioned people. the amazing music. Yeah. It's yeah. it's very, very cool to be, I think it was actually maybe like 2009 or 2010 that, that I went to the first, it might have been the first Saw Maze at Horror Nights in Orlando. Something like that, a long time ago. And, uh, and it was just so cool to be in the world that I knew and loved so well. Yeah, there's like winks and nods too that aren't necessarily meant to scare you. And and what I right. appreciate Easter about eggs. Saw overall is that, it, and, and this would go all the way back to the first one, certainly this entry that we're talking about today, is that there is a, it's not parody, but there is like a satirical element to all. It's very dark satire. It's, you know, it, but it also, it does have like a little bit of a political message, sure. but, it, but it's never going to let any of that stuff get in the way on, it's not going to let that stuff get on the train tracks with this caboose that is chugling that is there just yeah. to show us how inventive you can torture people and say, make them really yeah. question their decision making. We're still going to kill people in a gruesome fashion. Yeah, yeah. Just a slight spoonful <laughs> of also conscious kind of fun, political thought. Fun to see them get out of the traps too sometimes. Yeah. I, it, no matter what, it's interesting to see the trap work. Uh, the trap fail or the or the person succeed. You know what I mean? Like it's there's there's always something interesting that can be done with it. Yeah, I was gonna say like how Get do you mix. sell saw pe- How do you sell non saw people on this franchise? Have you given up trying? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> I was gonna say you really don't, I don't know at this if that's point. A good waste because of your the time. Thing, I, like the first movie I could probably sell somebody on, uh, but because I'm like it's not like the rest of them. It is really not as brutal. It's it's more psychologically brutal. It's sure. not as visually brutal. Uh, brutal. Uh, as it goes on, I, I mean, I have to admit, it is much more visually brutal. It just is. Um, the the they latched onto uh, the the gore and the mm-hmm. torture and the traps and stuff more than I don't want to say more than, but yeah, maybe a little, maybe a little more than the psychological aspect. Well, it, over it, the years. It, they, I mean, it's not even falling prey to you. Know what you have to do when you're a horror filmmaker or a company, and you're like, we're making multiple sequels. This thing, mm-hmm. you every every franchise has had to do this. The yep. Nightmare on Elm Streets. Uh, the, the, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween, the kills have to be more inventive. Mm. There has to be more blood. There has to be more jump scare. Wh- whatever it, the thing is that your franchise does well, you have to increase that with yeah. each subsequent chapter, even if chronologically, they're not all stacking up in the right well, order. And that becomes a problem, but yes, yeah. for sure, because then they, they want to have like a big, big crazy mm-hmm. trap that turns out to be like 10 years in the past. And it's like, wait, you did that? And then you like scaled down and then you went back up. You don't always have the same budget, you know, (laughs) just as far as like, like an evil genius, you know, sometimes your years are lean. Sometimes (laughs) the crypto market didn't play out in your favor. (laughs) Sometimes the stock market. And now you're just like, basically we have a tricycle and that's spoken for because that's what the puppet rides out. Well, and the tricycle, yeah, is a one-time purchase. Yeah, yeah, that's a, you can reuse <laughs> and that. And you thing. have it. Yeah. I would it's reuse the, it's my, my favorite trap in this movie was the, I loved the wheel, the, the carousel. Yeah, that's one of the it best. It was yeah. so good. And it also was so different than anything that I had seen in any of the other Saw films. Because again, I had already seen Saw 10 by this point. The shotgun carousel? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. so good. What yeah. a great, like I did, like again, it's evil. It's it's diabolical, but I mean, tip of the cap. But also I, I love that it, it's stare at it. funny at the end yeah. with the guy like, you look at me when That's you're killing I mean. so big, mm-hmm. clearly like intentionally huge going for it. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? But like to the point of it being funny, like yeah. it's kind of a funny scene and you know that like that uh, Kevin, the director, you know, he's he edited all the Saw movies up until moving into the director's chair for six. So he probably, in, in his mind, I can only imagine he's like, look, we got to do some send-ups here and there, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like we got to have this guy go big. And it works so well. The guy at the end is great. What do you do in that situation when you're pitted against a mom and she's got a family and she's like got a great rapport with this guy who's making the ultimate decision here? What do you say? Like, I am watching this movie last night and I'm like, there's nothing I could say. I'm pretty good with words. There's nothing I can say that's going to save my life in that situation. I mean, in truth, the girl that wanted to fake being pregnant was the best idea. Yeah, it was that a, was a the good best idea. idea. That yeah. is the best idea. And or the other guy called some, her out. Or the only other thing that I would say is <laughs> she's not pregnant. Is is a <laughs> I lie. I would have been that guy. I would have been the no, she's not. 
is a lie they can't check on. It's like, no, mm-hmm. I live by myself, but I literally have my parents who I pay for their thing. They would literally be destitute and homeless. Something like that. Like, you have to have somebody relying on you. That's yeah, the only way to get out of it. Yeah. But or I or just, maybe say nothing almost. Maybe like the least annoying. No, you're definitely dying. You, you think? <laughs> I almost feel like the least annoying maybe could also be good. No, because then he just thinks, okay, you're not making this hard on me. I can shoot. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm over two. I'm dying yeah. in every yeah. situation like, you're presenting. This is, this is not, but no, I wanted to add this. The reason why you can't invite people into the Saw franchise mm-hmm. is the same reason why you can't invite people to start listening to like Joe Rogan or UFC. They know too much about it. Yeah, actually, it's kind of true. And if you already have heard about it and you like it. Oh, so they're going in with a notion one yes. way or the other. Yes. That's what like, I was saying. The like, first one yeah. maybe. The like, first one maybe. That's maybe. the reason why. Like, it's like, that's why I was trying to say it's like, it's not that I think that the Saw franchise is like bad. It's just you've made your choice by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you can't, I don't think you could say it, unless it's like a Gen Z person who really has no idea this thing yeah. existed, which is a thing now. Sure. That's, yeah. I, but I, I think that the Saw movies ended up doing this really well. You know, we talk about how they have to amp up the blood and the yeah. guts and the scares and all that yeah. stuff. But like, that actually makes the first Saw movie a great entry point as a tester. To sure. be like, hey, yeah. it's, it's a way to dip your toe, or in the case of the first Saw, your whole foot, into this pool <laughs> yeah. and see if you like the temperature. That's because fair. if you don't like that movie... It just gets crazier. But then, yeah. you're not, no then, way. then you're not a Saw person. No way. But they still have to be, I think, a blank slate on the franchise for that to work. I still think that there's too much... It's become so, like, known mm-hmm. and parodied. And, like, like I didn't even remember where the franchise was now. I was, like, thinking about it. I was, like, where where did this start? Where has it been? Like, just trying to, like, add it up. I just don't think people would go into it, like, well, I don't know what this is. Let me have an open mind. They'd go into it, like, is there any way this is not going to be as stupid as I thought it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's, Yeah, no, you're right. Right. Yeah. 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 The other interesting thing is that uh, on a, on a kind of different level, but but similar, Everybody knows who Jigsaw is now, and that's the point of the first movie is you don't know who he is. Yeah. So it's like if you're watching it for the first time, you're not going to get that same pop that all of us got watching that ending for the first time. It's a little You'll Friday never, the 13th. Ever, yeah, yes. Jason. Yes. Yes. You're, you're you guessing Correct. who's killing these kids in the first Friday the 13th. Yeah. Yes. And then I know, the it's the guy with the hockey mask, right? Yeah. 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 Actually, it's a reverse in that regard. Yeah. It's a reverse of this problem because you can get twisted watching Friday the 13th because you think it's... You think it's Jason. Yes, that's, yeah. that's right. the only one. But so this is the reverse of that, but it is a problem. You might And you might be like, eh, that movie wasn't as good because you can't even imagine what it was like to see that for the mm-hmm. first time unspoiled. It was shocking. And so if it's going to be a real tester, I think it has to be a tester on, again, you just have to go to a blank <laughs> Like slate. a child. It has to be a child. Yeah. You know what? I referenced true romance the other day to somebody who looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what is that, like I a book? that I was, I was like, <laughs> it was in euphoria. Like, I am not an elder this is millennial. Cool, okay, it's like, cool. Sydney Sweeney, what did you think she was dressing like? And I swear <laughs> to God, they were like, that's what that's from? Wow, okay. True Romance was a movie. It felt like it was everywhere in the 90s. And people get, still talk about it. We all know what it is. But yeah, if you weren't maybe of that time, True Romance might be the movie. That might be the barom of like if it's more popular than True Romance, like if it's Pulp Fiction, <laughs> people know it. They've heard of it. If it's not at least as popular as True Romance, these the, the Gen Zers, many of whom listen at and 20, are members of the Fresh Ketchup crew. 27 year old, I might add. This was not a 22 year old. 22 year old, I'd be like, okay, that literally came oh, out. Oh, that's odd. You're 27. Born. 27. Oh, that's odd. I was picturing like 22. No, yeah. I would have. I would have felt a little bit sad, but still, I'm like, I know you watch Euphoria. Yeah. Mm. And she was like, "What is that? What that is from?" Yeah. Th- this is like now. I'm thinking it's like that meme where it's like, you know, if they blank, they're too young for you, bro. This is like if they don't know who's on the floor in that bathroom, she's too young for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If they don't know, then then they're too young. Wow. You're now old enough to. See these movies by yourself, allegedly. <laughs> this is the first one I'll be allowed to see alone. Oh Are you? Uh, and that's not age. That's actually just Eric's parents. Um, <laughs> yeah, very strict. Because his they poor dad watch had to see too many. Yeah. But with them, <laughs> they have uh, to be able to hide your eyes in the correct, right spots. Correct. Where's wow. your anticipation for for this new? Like, is this one of those things where every year the, it's it's January? You're looking at like, okay, I got to I'm seeing this movie in theaters. I'm seeing this opening day. The, it's a Saw movie every year for you. Oh, I'm I'm day one. Uh, I'm yeah. day zero. The the Thursday right. before it comes out for any Saw movie, and you know what? It's kind of like um, it's like M Night Shyamalan for me. Another person that I love, but has his hits and misses. A lot of plenty of misses, right? But I will always be there day one to see what the next thing is because I love I I just love it all so much. And so it's, I think of him. I think of Saw as certain franchises or or, or directors, whatever. Where I'm like, you can't lose me. 
You just can't. Mm -hmm. Even if I walk out of the movie and I don't like it, I didn't care for Jigsaw. But I couldn't wait for Spiral. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I'm, I'm ready for the next one no matter what. This one... Uh, Same I, director. I couldn't be more excited because, yes, Kevin's back. Uh, and he gave us six. And, and, uh, and he, again, it was the editor. He is uh, maybe, you know, obviously James Wan... And Lee Winnell did the first uh, three movies. He, James Wan directed the first one. Kevin Greuter, but again, you know, edited all of them. Yeah. Up until he went to the director's chair. His fingerprint, all the things that you think you love about it, like a lot of that is him. Mm. The editing, the style, all that stuff. And it's, it's him. cool when you see somebody come up through the, where it's like you edited this movie and yeah. then you did. and so Well earned, well it, deserved. It's, it's, yeah. it's like a coaching tree in the NFL. It's like mm, you were the yeah. offensive coordinator forever and you might be the genius behind this team's success. And now you get your chance to go out there and prove it, which I feel like after seeing Saw 6, Kevin Greuter did. And then saw X, you mean? Uh, no, no. Oh, well, saw six. Uh, both of them. Okay, I okay. Would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I don't want to give anything sure, away fair about enough, the fair new enough, movie. Fair enough. But on the subject of the new movie, we actually do have a quick uh, clip. It's not going to give anything away. Of the but ending. We, we do have a clip that is just spoiling. No, we have this for oh, yeah. Eric. Yeah. And last thing, really quick, just one line. I host the Rotten Tomatoes podcast. It's called Rotten Tomatoes is Wrong. Uh, oh. In the case of Saw Six, the tomato meter is very wrong. <laughs> and our special guest is Eric Striff, where he interviewed you. I when know Saw Eric. Six yeah, came yeah, out. yeah. That's if awesome. If you could just ca to camera tell Eric, oh, that's, it, he, that's his favorite <laughs> Saw movie. So if you could just give Eric a little message about thanks for you know making Saw Six you know your favorite or yeah, something yeah. like that. Hey, Eric Striffler, how are you? I remember you well, and uh, I've always appreciated how uh, supportive you are of, of Saw 6. So I hope you like this one. All right. Oh, I think I'm going to love it. You got a shout yeah. out. I love this guy. Yes, he is, he is so sweet. He's wonderful. Uh, and he's he's uh, you can tell that he's as big of a fan, uh, big a fan as of the franchise as I am, as anybody else is. That's a huge he, fan. He lit up yeah. more on your name than ours. So that <laughs> says something right there. He Rotten really Tomatoes, loved, yeah. he was questioning Eric. <laughs> yes. After we cut cameras, he did say that you can stop with the handwritten letters, that he's no longer yeah. uh, allowing those Fine. to be delivered. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they do get returned to sender anyway. So. <laughs> I know. I want to see what your, if you can think of the traps before we, uh, before we uh, close up shop here, your five favorite Saw traps across the franchise. Can you rattle them off? Is it like you have oh, them ranked? F five might take a while. Because we had Kevin let's rank his. Let's oh, you want yeah. Kevin's? So Maybe I give you see, three since yeah. he's on the fly. Just, hey, let's try to your do favorite traps and I'm going to see if any of these sync up with what Kevin told us. Uh, I think uh, way up there is the the key behind the eye trap. I'm going to save my number one for, for okay. you know, I'll save it. But okay. the key behind the eye uh, in, at the, the opening of Saw 2. Yeah. It's just yeah. an unbelievable way to open a sequel. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? That was like, oh, we're not done with this. We're, we're here. We're ready. Um, I feel like another, another one that drives people crazy because it's one where it's like, I know how you could have gotten out of that is also in Saw 2. Saw 2 had some of the best traps. Uh, the, the one where she puts her hand up into the razors to get the antidote out of the yeah, box. But yeah. she put up both. Mm -hmm. And then the, you can't come back down if you just... yeah. Not, uh, not thinking. Keep the, your head. Ne the needle pit from Saw 2. Again, so many in Saw 2 are huge. For me, I always have to go with, because I mentioned it before, you see it get escaped, you see it fail, and you see it succeed the reverse bear trap from the very first movie. Yeah. It goes all the way through to yeah. Saw 7, which was at the time the final chapter, so it's all the way through. But in Saw 1, she gets out. In Saw 6, he gets out, not in the intended way, in the incredible finale. And then in Saw 7, of course, it goes off. So, yeah. All right. I got to go with that one just because you get everything from it. All the other traps, you move on. This one, we got to see it all different ways. It was and awesome. with that first Saw movie, that was one of Kevin's favorites is just a, a Dr. Gordon basically having to make the decision yeah. to, oh, you know. Just enjoy, yeah. You know, it's funny. That movie centered around that one thing. I don't, I always forget that's considered a trap because the whole movie is the trap. As the movies go yeah. on, scenes of traps. Becomes traps. See what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, the whole movie's so trapped. Them the in the one. bathroom is a trap, but it's so grandiose that it's like, I always forget that is technically a trap. It's more yes. like a, a whole escape room. That he it really liked those guys. He, yeah. gave them, he gave them a lot of little fun things to do. Yeah, yeah really. And and the editing in that first one, like just watching the decision making and the flashbacks and yeah. stuff, it's like, yeah. it, you can see why this guy would be a great choice to direct one of these movies. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then he had a, he had two from Saw 2. He had the furnace and the needle pit. Needle yeah. pit, of um, course. Furnace is fun. 
one, but Needle Pit is yeah. a classic. Yeah. And then we go back to Heat with uh, one of my favorite traps from this new, uh, or the, the one that, that I just saw for the first time, Saw 6. Oh, the, the, the steam? The, the st or, I love the yeah. steam. Oh, yeah. Because when I work Everybody out, knows how that feels. My gym has a steam room. Yep. And I haven't been in it since seeing this movie. He doesn't want to say the name, I don't it's know. fancy. It's a nice gym. <laughs> and the steam room, I don't know who I'm going to be visiting for a little bit because- Too uh, much. I love getting in on that steam, but I, I might take about a week off from the steam. And then obviously the carousel too. So, yeah. Um, carousel, yeah. A lot of great traps. Nice. You, you have any thoughts on on any of the traps? No, I will say like I would just die. Like like at the beginning of this one when she's hey, cutting off right her there hand. with you. <laughs> like That's I got it. the first twinges of like some mild arthritic pain, and I was literally like, chop it off. If you <laughs> you give me something, I really feel like I could hack through. Like I'm not gonna torture myself for three minutes or whatever just for the sake of like giving an effort. If I think I can actually like the get guy, through the this other thing. guy did, he cut yeah. off little pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. That's like, man, I can't wait for you to see the new one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I am oh, so boy. excited for the new one uh, in Kevin. We trust. Yes. I'm ready. There you go. <laughs> All right. So we are going to uh, transition to our close outro here, and you do want to stay tuned because Eric has a very fun thing. If you're in the New York area here oh, in yes. a couple weeks, hit oh, the yes. music, Brian. Is that where you live? I live in a van. I think I might have mentioned he that. He literally lives in a van. <laughs> right, that's right. But yeah. New York is home base. I'm from New York, so. I do know that. Yeah. I do know that. Yes. Yeah. Hey, kids, you want to go to a haunted house curated by a guy who lives in a van? Well, you can Excuse do me, that. I don't have a mustache. <laughs> it's fine, okay? I mean, Tell us hard. about this, uh, th this haunted house thing you got going. Yeah, so it's called uh, Nyctophobia. Um, we we kind of changed the name a few years ago to, to uh, Synthetic Presents Nyctophobia, but I think we're kind of going back to the original name. Uh, but um, it's Nyctophobia, it, it, which is the fear of the dark. Mm -hmm. And uh, every year is a different show. Started doing it in 2010. My, my career in this field really started in 2004, so almost 20 years ago, where I, I started <sighs> acting in these kind of things. Then I went on to creating my own scenes and then branching off and creating my own whole exhibit. And back then, more of a haunted house, now more of a theatrical, like immersive experience. Um, it's not it's not like people jumping out at you and stuff like that. So we, do, we always want to make that clear to people. It's not like chainsaws and clowns and stuff. It's more um, spooky uh, and fun. Um, I always say it's important to give fun because like I was saying before, with the horror um, genre, you don't know what scares people. So we'll give you some scares, but we'll do also make sure you have fun. Because okay. if you're not the type okay. to get scared, then right. we want to at least give you a good time. Yeah. So it's fun. It's spooky. It is scary. Um, but yeah, not people jumping out and stuff like that. It's more like storyline, trying to like solve some clues and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. October 13th, 14th, and 15th. We're doing one weekend only. We haven't done it since 2016. Uh, because I moved into my van. Oh, really? I moved okay. into my van and I was on the road and then there was COVID and now we're like, it's time to bring it back. So we're dipping our toes back into the water um, with one weekend only. And you just so happened to have uh, possibly Jacqueline and myself both in New York City that weekend. Very um, interesting. Right. I, very I interesting. have uh, shows y'all can go to uh, in New York, uh, October 12th and 13th. I'll be headlining at New York Comedy Club. You can get tickets at markellis.live. Thanks to everybody who came to see me in Vegas, by the way. Some new tour dates, including Boston next year, are going to be announced soon. Um, Jacqueline, are we going to this thing in New York? Like, would you do so? You heard the pitch. Yeah. I think the pitch is really great. <laughs> I am going to moderate a panel with a guy that knows a little bit about a horror, Mr. Jason Blum. He'll Ooh. be there with the new Exorcist. Bring, bring him along. Bring him. Bring him. Yeah. Uh, He'd love it. I'm on their dollar, so tell, I don't know tell, exactly tell, what tell they Mr. have Blum, planned. He can get his tickets at synthetic.nyc. <laughs> he would go. I have no problem about him going, but I am not going to be the one to say. No, I mean, it, honestly, I think it might work out. It depends mm -hmm. on like what great. I have going on, but just the fact that I'm there is great. Crazy enough. So is that the same weekend as Comic Con? Then I guess. Yes. Or, oh, per that's perfect. So I feel if like you're gonna be. That's a good crossover crowd. I mean, it, it, yeah. Now it seems like destiny. Yeah. It yeah. Does. It seems like Kinda fate. Does. I might have to put some promo up at the at the con. I might have to you like should. put some posters up for something. But if you are gonna be at Comic Con, you should um, come to the Universal Exorcist panel. And yeah. see me. Come say hi. Tell me that you like the podcast if you listen to it. You see you Jacqueline moderate. You can come get some giggles yeah. with me and then let Eric uh, scare the crap out of you in a fun yeah. way. In a fun way. In a fun this Well, if you really it. want Eric to scare the crap out of you, that's going to be this coming weekend where he will once again be dusting off his legendary karaoke chops. Which you can hear I have my full voice for sure right I know. now. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a little raspy from a, my best friend's wedding this past weekend at all. Trying to recover. So that's Why the thing. A little Tom watch, watch the show to find out if I did recover. <laughs> that's the that's the pitch. Get some vocal rest. <laughs> yeah. I'll be fine. That's going to well, be yeah, like the, right uh, now. Yeah, this is my vocal rest. The Wanger show they do karaoke uh on an annual basis, I believe. Yep. Sometimes uh yep. more karaoke opportunities crop up with those yep. knuckleheads, you never know. 
one of which may or may not be producing the show right now. So good luck <laughs> with that. And uh, anything else you got going on? You want to recommend anything else for the kids out there that they should be watching around this time of year? Oh, gosh. You know what? Uh, around this time of year? Yeah, I guess it's spooky time. I'll tell you what. My So we were just talking about scary but fun. Uh, my my favorite types of movies to watch around this time are Halloween movies, not necessarily horror movies. Doesn't need to be scary as long as it's got that Halloween vibe. Okay. And my number one for that is, and it's a little spooky, It's but it's a, like an R.L. Stein joint kind of deal. Uh, when Good Ghouls Go Bad. Oh, okay. Yes, it's a, it was on ABC Family back in the day. And again, if she doesn't know what ABC Family is, she's too young for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ABC family. Does she know what true romance is? That's my cutoff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it was a, like a TV movie and it's just got the perfect Halloween vibe and it's fantastic. You know, like, so Hocus Pocus isn't scary, but it's Halloween. Like the worst It's witch. like that. The worst witch and Return to Oz are my movies like that. There was some made for TV joint scary. <laughs> with, with like Rue McClanahan in it and a bunch of goblins. I can't oh, remember, yeah. but it was adorable. Yeah. yeah I know it, it, yeah. Nice spooky time kind of feel. So you know? there you go. I if you're looking you. for, for the Halloween vibe, because, you know, it's not usually it's if it's Halloween, it must be Saw. But now it's if it's back to school, it must be Saw, really, because it's September. <laughs> mm. uh, which they didn't capitalize on, by the way. Slash Saw sale. Uh, so now if it's Halloween, it must be when good ghouls go bad. Maybe I'll start that. I'm, Hashtag. I see. I'm, I'm getting into the not. I mean, I always like the horror and I'm never like a Halloween costume guy. I'm lighting a lot of pumpkin spice candles. <gasps> really? In I mean, uh, Casa de Ellis. Getting into it. It makes me feel like football. <laughs> That's what I. Is it because I'm white? Is that why I'm doing it? <laughs> a white person like in PSL. Okay. He's like at the doctor. Just give it to me straight. Is it because I'm white? Is it because I'm... <laughs> oh man give this, it to me straight this whole like, time I thought I was guess. evolving as an adult and it's like no nope, you finally fell into the trap that you're, all white people do like let me guess you liked that show in the 90s that had Ross and Rachel like that's where it is PSL I watched a lot of Friends North in Vegas jacket, I watched a lot friends of Friends box set. in Vegas because I was being a good boy and went back to my room after the show every night um, you should Jacqueline is going to be at New York Comedy uh, New, I'm going to she might be at New York Comedy Club I'm going to do um, five minutes she's going to go to New York Comic Con and do some moderating so check out all of her exploits on social media as well. Uh, for Eric Striffler, Jacqueline Coley, our whole team behind the scenes here, I am Mark Ellis. Go to RottenTomatoes.com for all the latest and greatest in the world of movies, TV, everything in between. And next week, Jacqueline, big, big episode, a movie that I have never seen before. I can't believe you haven't seen this movie before, but I really appreciate that we were bringing two black women to a movie that only brought one. It's the craft, ladies uh, and gentlemen. <laughs> a few pumpkin spice candles got yeah, lit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And I think we're going to have a special guest that's going to be awesome. This is going to be so great. This is going to be so great. It's a fun time of year for all of us here at Rotten Tomatoes. To all of you out there listening, thanks. Do all the rate, review, all that good stuff wherever you enjoy this podcast. Make us part of your week or bi-weekly or whenever you see a new episode crop up. We love hearing from you. Can write us. Rotten Tomatoes is wrong is the name of the show. RT is wrong at RottenTomatoes.com is the email address. And with that, we will say thank you. Good night. Good luck. And uh, do you want to? It's not. Do you want to play a game? I'd like to play a game. It's, uh, oh yes, <laughs> there will be reviews. There will be reviews. Oh my gosh, <laughs> we'll see y'all next week.